episode 83 of DYW TSB. I'm Morton, as always. I've got Queen and Pops with me tonight. Hello, everybody. We're back to as always. Yay! For now. I mean, wait. What's up, world? <laughs> <laughs> what up, guys? How we living today? Doing pretty good. How are you? I mean, I got a White Claw. It's raspberry flavored. We got some some stuff to discuss. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh, we have stuff to discuss. That means I have to. <laughs> yeah, we're probably fighting when we get to the AW section. Can't wait. Strap in, kids. It's happening. Put on your seatbelt. Fight, fight, it. fight, it. fight, fight, fight. Man, it's, you know what's going to happen, though? She's going to actually have a better fight than someone else did last week. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> It's this this fight is gonna be like Mufasa and Scar. And I may just end up at the bottom of the ravine getting trampled by Wildebeest, but we we'll have to wait and see. Oh Lord. Are you wait, s- that makes me scar. Are you saying you're the baby face of the show, Pops? <laughs> Apparently I'm the heel, but you know what? It's true. I am surrounded by idiots. Hey. But... Not anymore. <laughs> but... <laughs> see, I try to say that she's gonna murder me in an argument and she calls me an idiot. <laughs> Well, so Scar said you told me I'm Scar. So, look out, motherfucker. <laughs> what are we doing this week? <laughs> no idea, dude. What are we doing? <laughs> Just well, a, 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 as a quick detour, I, I have to mention it. How, how, how about Baby Yoda? Oh, it's so cute. Oh, don't ruin it for me. I haven't started that I'm show yet. Saying a word, but, I, but more, guess what? What? They're making plush Baby Yodas. That's awesome. Oh, shut the front door. I'm going to have to get five I, of those. You can buy one. Right? On my Christmas list already. I can't wait. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. That's all we'll say. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> That'll look really good next to my gizmo. Baby Yoda's going to be our team mascot. Yeah, I'm going to get him a little DYWTSB t-shirt. robe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, a t-shirt to go under his robe. Perfect. Uh, robe it will be. Are you looking for the newest and hottest in the world of pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on Powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 6,000 hours of the best events from over 150 of your favorite promotions from 20 different countries around the globe. Brands like Progress Wrestling, Evolve Wrestling, Combat Zone, Defy, PCW Ultra, PWX, Over the Top, Shine, and hundreds of others with fresh content added every day for only $5.99 per month. Get your free trial today at powerslam.tv. And how about the highs for Monday Night Raw? Okay. I have two. First one is Buddy Murphy versus Akira Tozawa. I liked it. I wish it lasted longer. And Becky Lynch punching some security dude right in the kisser. Like a real punch to the face. It was dope. Those were the two things I liked. (laughs) (laughs) I also like the Becky Lynch punch to the security guy's face because it really may or may not have been a working punch. I I haven't decided yet. But Motherfucker got dropped. It was great. And even though it ultimately got interfered with the Seth Rollins and Andrade match, was also pretty good and they didn't kill either guy it was because because of the interference and I, 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 and there was definitely a, and there was a sign of respect between the two of them at, at the end of it so we're, i hope we get more of that because that would be really cool i think one of the things that, that i have to say over all the last couple of weeks i i like this invasion this invasion angle of all three brands it's been pretty interesting how about you pops i really enjoyed the Almighty Pit. No, I didn't. Never mind. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, Buddy I'd have Murphy. Had to, I would have had to fire you from your from your own show, pops. Well, I, I really enjoyed Buddy Murphy picking a fight with Alistair Black. Um, I think that's going to be fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other thing that I really enjoyed, other than Rowan and a jobber, is uh, <laughs> Triple H is coming. <laughs> Sorry. I tried to, like, be serious about that. That was not even work. funny. It didn't work. You didn't, anyway, you were laughing. <laughs> um, I want Triple... I want to hire Triple H. 
to come and tell me how good I am every day so that I feel good about myself because he made me feel really good about myself as he was talking to Kale. Like, mm-hmm. he, I need to work for him. I That is a guy who could talk me into running through a wall for him. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> crazy. Um, and, and I, too, I agree. I like the invasion angle, but I think I like it more because Triple H is involved. Right. And he's, like, general, you know. And I know they're pining for him to be a part of the show on Sunday, but I hope he's not. He said he doesn't want to, so that's at least good. So, yeah. That's uh, three hours I got. (laughs) That. All right, and how about the lows of Monday Night Raw? Well. (laughs) Lana? Almighty Piss Break? I mean, listen, I don't want to give it a lot of credence because I say the same thing every week. It's just, it has to go. I, I really can't. And just the evidence of, like, the fumbling over lines and the not being able to do things right and the constant mess-ups, it just kind of shows me that, she, you know, you guys were telling me that she's the one that's uncomfortable. You could tell. Um, she, it's just not flowing for her because I feel like she's just not into it. So that was clear. That was, a t- that was just terrible. Um, and Eric Rowan talking into a cage... With the camera on the inside of the cage. Very but you can't see what's inside the cage. But you can't see what's in inside it. the cage. So, like, why would you yeah. put a camera in to watch what's in the cage looking at you? And if it's supposed to be the thing that's looking at you in the cage, why is it wearing a GoPro? Like, I just don't understand. I just can't. I can't deal with the stupidity. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fucking dumb. The best thing about Eric Rowan in, in, in the cage is WWE on Fox's Twitter Wanting it to be Baby Yoda. Yeah, you need to. I need to hire that guy to tweet for me too. Right. But I don't think I can afford him. Yeah. Um, just pretty much the rest of this. It was very forgettable. You know, their go home shows for me, for their their recent pay per views have just been really lackluster. Um, I don't know what I'm expecting exactly at this point. But I just would kind of hope they would help build towards pay per view, and they had moments, right, building mm-hmm. towards Survivor Series. But it it's it makes the NXT look fucking great, and everybody else look like trash. Oh shit! <laughs> so, which is great. I'm fine with that. But it just I don't know. It's just a weird. It's weird. It's weird. I don't like it, guys. I just I don't. But I'm hoping Survivor Series will be, or Clash of Champions, Night of Champions, Survivor Series, whatever we're calling this. Yeah. Night of Champions. That's, I mean, that's really shirt. what it is. All right, so that's what I got. Mort, what do you got? <laughs> I also have Eric, Eric Rowan versus the Jobber because why? And Lana and the Almighty Press Break because get it, I don't need daytime soaps on my on my nighttime TV. I really, really don't. <laughs> you don't need daytime soaps on your man soap opera. Pretty much. <laughs> God damn it. We don't need <laughs> who's your daddy angles, uh, I guess. All right. Yeah, my pen ran out of ink when I was writing all the stuff that I didn't like. So, I I don't understand like Lynch and Flair aren't friends, but we're gonna keep putting them together. I like be friends or, you know, like somebody said a long time ago, if you ain't, be ain't, but if you is, be is. Like that that that's how I feel about this this whole situation. Um, so that well, the, the, the way I interpret that is Becky Lynch is still kind of sort of hot, so they're kind of doing what they like to do with Roman when Roman's not hot, but somebody else is. They rub up, rub, rub Roman on, to, on on the person that's hot, ho- hoping that he catches fire, and they're doing that with Charlotte. Well, maybe I mean, Charlotte that... should learn how to cut a promo, right? <laughs> Fucking Jesus, what was yeah. that? That uh, was what... terrible. It was horrible. That's but... the worst she's been. You know, like if that's the case, I'm fine with it. But I don't think that's the case. I think they keep marching them out there and teasing a fucking four horsewomen reunion just to piss us all off because we're never going to get it. Mm-hmm. They have a perfect opportunity this weekend to do it, and they've screwed up everybody's character so bad that it wouldn't even make sense if it happened. Nope. You and can't if they do it. if they somehow do it and it even remotely kind of makes sense, cool. But I. I've been wanting him to do it for two years now. The only way we get that this weekend is if, by happenstance, you get Charlotte and Becky and Bailey and Sasha beating down NXT Four Horsewomen. But that's all we're going to get. 
Yeah, we're not going to get that because they're not smart enough to do that. We so, gave yeah. it to them. We laid it out perfectly for SummerSlam. Yes. Yep. And they didn't fucking listen. No I... nice things, god damn yeah. it. God damn and bastard. then they completely screwed up Sasha's character going forward. And Bailey, a.k.a. Karen. I'm calling her Karen. You ever see right. that thing on mm-hmm. on uh, oh. on the internet about the girl in a taxi? Yep. They call her Karen. You know, she's like, okay, Karen, sit down. She's like the annoying, like, uh, how do you describe that more? Like the, the annoying... The, the annoying friend? Yeah, the annoying friend, the one that always complains on Yelp because one bad thing happened and it's like two pages long. That's fucking Karen. Sit down, Karen, with uh, your haircut. Fuck me, I can't. Fuck me, Sharon. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's too much. All right. Well, that's enough of that crap. Let's talk about something good. How about the highs of AEW Dynamite on Wednesday night? Oh, boy. Uh, Phoenix versus Nick Jackson. <laughs> <clears throat> Ray Phoenix is uh, amazing. Mm-hmm. I just want to say before I say my second real high that the match between Private Party and Proud and Powerful for uh, their fallen friend, Matt Chavis, I thought that was really special and really nice. I love that commentary spoke about him as well, and they gave him that moment. I thought that was really cool of them to acknowledge. I mean, I, I, I could go with the obvious match that was like the best of the night, but I kind of want to give my second high to the dark order, or uh, uh, see, I almost fucked it up right there. The dark order cult recruitment promo. I don't like the dark order at all, but that fucking promo was stellar. Are you gonna have to like, well jo- jo- join Dark Order, Queenie? Fuck no, those guys creep me out. Absolutely not. <laughs> but, but run away. It's a trap because it's a cult. But it was beautifully done because if. You weren't really paying attention, and like you were, I don't know, on your phone tweeting or whatever, you would look, and think it's a commercial. Mm -hmm. It's literally what happened to me. It's not a commercial. They're trying to get you in, like fucking Scientology. Yeah. (laughs) And I was like, Yeah, that's what what I thought it was. Hang on, that's what I thought it was too. And I was like, Why is this happening on TNT? Like this is freaking me out. I'm like, Oh, maybe it's a promo for a new show. Brilliant. I had no clue that it was going to be for the Dark Order. And that's something they desperately needed because they are like, they were drowning. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, what's happening? Yeah, it, uh, it, It's cool. If, if you give cool. me more of that Dark Order, I'm, I'm all in. Like, like I've said in the last couple of weeks, I don't connect with the Dark Order, but you give me this and we're good. Yeah, it was really smart. So, I mean, I'll go for the obvious stuff, and I'll echo you guys later, so I'm sure one of you will bring it up. But, yeah, I had to do it. I had to go for that. The Ray Phoenix and Nick Jackson match, because to me, Phoenix is what WWE hopes they've got with their newer luchadors. Ray Phoenix is this generation's Rey Mysterio. And I, I can't remember who, who I saw say that on, on Twitter. If I if I could, I'd, I'd credit them because I completely agree with them. The, the other thing that I, that I will say again, I'm gonna ch- shout out my buddy Daryl again. He's absolutely in love with Sheeta from this week. And my Sheeta. My, my other high was the main event, Moxley versus Darby Allen. That super paradigm shift was fucking nuts, bro. Bro. Whenever he slipped on those ropes, I almost had a heart attack. Uh huh. I was like, no, oh my God, don't do it. And then he just managed to pull it off. Thank God. Wow. That match was unbelievable. I wish it had more time. And I even like the uh, body bag spot, which those can, those, yeah. can come, those can come across hokey if done wrong, but it didn't. How about you, Pops? Well, first let me start with saying, if there is ever a Darby Allen match on... TNT on my television on Wednesdays, it's going to be a high So going forward. The match could completely suck. It's going to be a high going forward. I don't care. Okay, because he came... I don't want to waste a lot of time because I have a couple other things I want to say, but he... They wasted no time. Mm-hmm. Zero time. There was no. There was zero wasted time in that entire match from before the bell rang to, to after the bell rang. So um, that kid... And I call him a kid because he's younger than me, but he's 26 years old, and he has more psychology in his pinky finger than most of the professional wrestlers in this business today, bar none. 
you don't like it, hate me, hate tweet me, DM me. I don't give a fuck. I'm right. You're wrong. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> I too, and this is going to be very funny coming out of my mouth. Other than the obvious things that I did not like in the match, I very much enjoyed Nick Jackson versus Ray Phoenix. Um, the, obviously, there's going to be some things in this newer pro wrestling that I don't care for. Uh, if anybody wants to hear me work it out uh, with a friend, tune in on Tuesday to Convos with Pops because I've, I've figured out what my issue is. So... I'm watching wrestling in a different way. Um, it, it's taken two people now to get to me to actually tell me I'm an old ass man. So, other than that, moving on. Um, my Lord. other high, but I okay. I enjoyed the uh, Proud and Powerful versus Private Party match a great deal. I thought, uh, look, I think because of what they were wrestling for. Yes, they kept their storylines in play with their ranked here, they ranked there, but they were all four in there wrestling in memory of a friend. I can't shit on it. What I will shit on in that match, I will get into for my lows. But my other high was Chris Jericho talking himself into a fucking title match. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Excellent. Like, that guy is just, everybody at home knew what was happening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and we were just like, there no, for no, it. No. No, 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 we don't want it. I'm just, like, waiting for it. And I knew it was going to happen, but I loved every minute of waiting for it to actually happen. So uh, kudos to uh, Jericho and SCU and fucking Hager, too. I mean, every time he said sorry and grinned, I thought it was hilarious. So <laughs> that was my other high. <clears throat> <laughs> I really like that, too. And also, shout out to Scorpio Sky, man. He's coming in hot, baby. All right. Coming in hot. I'm ready for that. I- I'm glad he stepped up. Glad he stepped up, and I'm glad we, we are here where we are. Impressed the hell out of me last night. Yeah, for sure. He's, you know, he's very talented and stuff, and, like, that I knew, for me, at least, was no question, but it was cool to see him get in Chris Jericho's face, and I was like, yes, son, work. I he just it. thought it was great. He did it, man, and I, it was awesome. So good for you, buddy. All right, and how about the lows for AEW? All right, so I have a few. So I'm going to start with this cluster of a a battle royale Mm. man um you know i don't know what was really going on there were some moments that were pretty cool uh and it was you know fun and interesting i don't really need christopher daniels in a pentagon junior mask so i'm kind of over that whole thing Uh, and it's barely even started but like i'm over it so that was kind of annoying, but like I like how Chucky e. T got rid of Pentagon. So that was kind of cool. Jimmy Havoc stable gunning people. That was dope. Um, I don't understand why Billy Gunn is involved in anything, but whatever. Uh, so there's that. The thing that really bothered me, um, oh, Orange Cassidy, by the way, hysterical. But the things that bothered me is all, all of a sudden during the middle of his majesty, Kip Sabian running to the left and diving out of the ropes, and Joey Janela running out. <laughs> The right and diving through the ropes at no one. Kip Sabian at least went for someone on the outside. I'm, I think they just didn't get it. <laughs> Joe Janelle literally, I can't, I'm laughing. He literally threw himself between the middle rope and just, there was nobody there was nobody there, buddy. You didn't even hit anybody on the way out. So, I don't know what was up with that. That was like a total clusterfuck. Also, why is Adam Page constantly winning battle royales? I know it's only two, so I shouldn't say constantly, but like, why? I can't. That annoys me. And um, also, I'd like to them to explain why it's a diamond ring and what that has to do with. So I would like to understand what that means. My second low is the ref spot. I had a really, I have a really big problem with this. This is not the first time that it's happened. If someone doesn't do what they're supposed to do, then you do what you're supposed to do. Or figure out a way to fix it. Um, this should not be happening. I don't care how young or whatever the company is. It's happened too many times. And there was no one pulling at your leg, so please don't pretend and insult everyone's intelligence that someone was touching you when they weren't. And then it just it show it exposes like the fourth wall for me. And I understand it's you know storyline and everything set up and whatever like that's not what I'm saying. So don't come for me, Marks. But what I'm trying to say is, I just didn't like that. He, obviously something went wrong. So in that moment when you're about to hit three and no one's touching you make a decision. If the match is going to end, it's going to end, and everybody has to deal with that backstage. It makes you look stupid. Mm-hmm. And I don't like that. Yeah. Um, and I had a yeah. 
A couple other things I didn't like either, but those are my top two. Yeah, on that note, what you just said is uh, Jimmy Corderas even said, you count to three, management will back you. Right. You know, yeah. everybody's shitting on the, on, on the ref because the ref is supposed to be the official, and I 100% agree with you. It ruined the match for me. Yep. Uh, yep. It really did. I'm not excusing uh, the wrestlers, uh, by the no, way. No. Right. That's my point. Right. Like, Oh, I'm not either. They're, they're out, also just, to blame. Kick out, son. You know. Like, you know what you're supposed to do. Like, I understand him being disoriented, and sometimes shit happens, but, like, the person on top of you knows, so, like, pick him up. Right. Pretend like, oh, I'm not going to let you go down that way. I'm going to get you out some other... You know what I mean? Do the work. You know what you're supposed to do. Yep. That's all I'm saying. So I totally totally agree with that. It's their I, fault as well. And I, and I think if the refs were doing what they were supposed to do and just calling it like it's it, it's legit, the wrestlers wouldn't rely on the, the refs to screw around and save their asses. Right. Yeah, you need to commit. I agree. How about you, Mort? Me, uh, other than the ref spot, which was pretty much well, well covered the three of us. My my ish, issue being a, a tech guy. I I'm not sure if everybody had an issue with it, but I had severe commentary sound issues to the point where they were really really. And I get it, the hot crowd last night, but I there were very few spots where I could actually hear. J, JR and com, com, commentators. I just could not hear them. I tried everything on my end to screw with it to, so I could hear them, and it was, wasn't on my end. So something was going on, and it it was like the best way I can equate it. It was like me getting the in in, in arena experience with the occasional two minute breaks because I was still getting commercials. Huh. Yeah, because I remember you had said something about that, and I'm like, I can hear everything just fine. I don't know. But I saw it all over Twitter, too, so obviously you weren't alone. Mm-hmm. Um, and I saw, like, please turn up their mics. And I'm like, what's wrong? So something was definitely going on. And it was the entire two hours. If it was half an hour, I could have understood and forgiven it. But it was literally the entire show. That's crazy. How about you, Pops? Well, okay. Let's, let's get into it. So we already addressed the rough spot um it's just it's just it was this is okay tony shivani has said uh, on his podcast that they don't talk in his ears they're allowed to say what they allowed they're allowed to commentate we all know that vince mcmahon is screaming in their the announcer's ears right i think that that ref spot was one of those moments that somebody should have got in the announcer's ears and said hey nobody touched him Let's spin it a different way, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, because it went from somebody pulled his leg to he wasn't the right guy in the ring. But then after that was all over, the same guy was still in the freaking ring, and it it was bad. The announcing on that portion was bad, uh, and unfortunately, it was bad in another spot too. Uh, I'll get. Uh, I'll just go into that. I did not enjoy Britt Baker versus Sheeta. You know, Excalibur, towards the end when she got her, she had her nose bleeding, Excalibur is trying to explain that she's probably having a hard time breathing. Cool. One person needed to say it. I didn't need JR and Tony to repeat it 150 times. It made it seem not real. It, it, it made it seem like they were trying to excuse the fact that Britt Baker had zero reason to be in a ring with Shida at all. So let's come up with an excuse as to why she sucks nuts. But guess what? She didn't have a bloody nose in the beginning of that match. She had no business being in the ring. I love Britt Baker, but this is not Britt Baker. This is somebody who cannot handle the spotlight. This is their number one pick. And she has had a shitty match with every single person she's been in the ring with on television, not on television, on pay-per-view. I can't handle it. Sorry, Britt. I love you, but it's time to... Figure it out. Pitter patter. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. I don't mean I can't get in the ring and do what they do. But if I can get in the ring and look like shit, I can do what Britt Baker did. I, sorry. It, it is what it is. Do you, I mean, do you agree? Queen, I, I do. I, I do. You know, um, you know, I, I was texting uh, with JPQ and Anthony while we were watching live, and I just said, Britt has about three or four things in her pocket. It's a sling blade, a neck breaker, some sort of something else. I can't even fucking remember because it's boring. And her her mandible claw, which you can't call a mandible claw, uh, nerve pressure thing, lockjaw. That's literally it. 
and she doesn't look right. She doesn't look comfortable. For me, it's ever since she got her bell rung by B. Priestley, and that outside fight. I think it was was it Fighter Fest or I think so. Yeah, right. Yeah. Whichever one she got her bell rung real hard and had that concussion, she hasn't been the same since. Um, she just looks messy and not comfortable, and she looks her best when she walks to the ring and when she leaves. And I don't mean I'm not trying to be disrespectful either. I really like Britt Baker. It's I agree though. This isn't her. And you put her in a match with Sheeta. <laughs> that girl's a fucking badass. Yep, and yep. you're exposed hard. And I don't understand why they're pushing her this hard this long if it's just not working. This is your one women's match, which also is my problem. Um, I, I, th- this whole division is such a, an issue for me. But you're making it worse by putting someone in that's not ready to handle it. Sorry, she's not. Sheeta looks like she's comfortable, happy ready to go, wants to be here, moved to this country, is learning English, is trying really hard to, like, you know, uh, to do that. She makes YouTube videos of her speaking English, so she practices. Like, put her and Rio in a match. Just let it happen. Um, Put uh, uh, Shauna in a match, because that girl came out in her debut and sold like a mother. So put her in with Sheeta. Or put even Big Swole, who is very green, is better than Britt Baker right now. Sorry. It's not working for me, especially in a division where they're just not, they're not doing them any favors. They're not helping. I agree. So, um, the Battle Royal. Yeah. Okay, so it's for a diamond ring. Cool. Because we can take another idea from a different promotion and make it a new one is basically how I'm looking at this. Um, I don't understand it. I think putting Billy Gunn in there was the worst possible decision they could ever make because he made their entire... 11 man roster that they put in there look tiny. I mean, the some bitch is a giant. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's huge. Okay. They don't have any big guys. But, right. Oh, but I'm saying, her. like, so, well, yeah. So, but you put Billy Gunn in there, they're all going to look like children. I mean, and hell, Marco Stunt did look like a child when he jumped <laughs> on him. But I thought it was cool because Marco kind of is a little bit crazy. So, so whatever. Um, what else did I like? Uh, I don't like Peter Avalon. I think he's a fake ass wannabe Damian Sandow character, um, and he sucks. And why isn't Leva Bates wrestling? So, and why that. is she talking? Great question. <laughs> don't know. So, <laughs> don't can't answer that. Um, yeah, I mean, there were lows, but I. But here's the thing. I, I was told that I need to do this after I'm done watching a show. I have to say, did I enjoy it? And if I did, then it wasn't that bad, right? I enjoyed the show. There was shit that the company itself can change. Like, let's give let's give Britt some chance to figure out who she is. We were told that we were going to have a phenomenal women's division, and we're getting one shitty match a week. I understand it's only week eight or whatever, so, mm-hmm. you know, give it some time. I understand. But let's put our best foot forward, mm-hmm. you know? Let's, let's yeah. you know, especially with, and then make good decisions. Like, don't put Billy Gunn in there. Cool, you get a pop. But this, you can't just drive your TV on pops in the crowd. You have to drive your TV with, with you when you have 50% of Twitter saying that your whole roster is tiny and they're unbelievable. Don't put a fucking monster in and make them all look tiny and unbelievable. Like, come on. Like, we're trying to get those people to change their minds so little things like that in the commentary uh, I mean I have a personal affection for JR and Tony Schiavone but at some point you gotta let Excalibur talk and compliment him not just feed off of him and run with what he says mm-hmm. Agreed. Uh, and Excalibur's great I like him with Golden Boy and Taz so far that's my favorite three or just Excalibur and Shivani, to be honest. I'm sorry. Right. Listen, like, I, I have issue with JR. I just, I can't do it. He's not the same Jim Ross. He has moments where it's just great and it hits because he's Jim Ross. But he just doesn't know these people. And it shows and it makes everyone look bad. And that's not what you want for your product. It's just not working. Bring him in for pay-per-views or something. Yes. I don't know what to tell you. That'd be good. Because he's, he's amazing on their pay-per-views. Right? So good. Yeah. So bring so... him in for that and let him study during the week and do, like, interviews and shit backstage. 
like when they do their promo packages and shit. That'd be great. They should do that and just it's just not. Ugh. Or or at least, you know, cuz JR likes to go into things without a lot of information. At least kind of stress like, "Hey, can you have a little bit more information? Can we give you some information, please? Because we need you to have it." Like I did not need for them to tell me for 5 minutes that that Brit had a fight uh, a fucking bloody nose and she couldn't breathe. Well, if they knew the, anything else about these people, we wouldn't have this problem. Right. You know. You can run with it if you know who you're talking about. Yeah. And then, like, the the best line that JR had in two hours was there was a point where um, a really skinny private party member, I can't remember their name. Isaiah names. Kennedy? Yeah, him. Okay. He, like, he, like, hit a move on the outside and stopped and posed in the and. And he was like, it's not school picture day. And I just fucking, I popped. I'm like, <laughs> yes. Because, yeah. you know. <laughs> like that He called just... him Isaiah Kennedy, which is why I said that. <laughs> oh, right. Like, but, yes, you know, you. whatever. But See, he, this is the like, problem. Yeah. But the, it's not it school funny. picture day just popped me. Because I'm like, that's how I feel. It's like, he's just standing there waiting for somebody to kick him in the head. But, you know, I enjoyed the show. I had fun watching it. Um, I didn't have to turn it off and go back to it. I like this. So, too. Unlike Monday Night Raw that I had to finish this morning. In doses. Yeah. So, yeah. I really like, can't. I can't take it anymore, guys. I might just start watching the pay per views and see how it goes. I cannot. Monday Night Raw is just so shitty. So wow, what we else? didn't fight about AEW. I don't know what you thought we were going to fight about. What do you think we were going to fight about? I have no idea. I just I always just assume when it comes oh. to AEW and tag teams, we're going in. <laughs> we can fight. I can complain about. The no selling when you get kicked in the head seventy five times in the oh first match God. of the night, but uh, <laughs> why would I do that? Because it was an entertaining match. I can get over the fact that somebody has enough adrenaline to get kicked in the head twice and no sell it and yeah. kick somebody else back. Like I, I, I can get over that. Okay, you do because that. I because I'm looking at things in a different perspective. Okay, I'm very happy. I'm looking so, forward to so, Tuesday. Hey everyone, it's your girl, the Queen of NE, and I'm so excited to tell you about my show, Queen's Court. It's an awesome, fun, super interactive podcast led by yours truly, bringing you some awesome interviews, some great collabs, and just enjoying discussing our beloved sport of wrestling. You can find me on Twitter at the Queen of NE on Instagram at X the Queen of Any, and of course my podcast, Queen's Court, on Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are out. I encourage you to come take a listen to something new, something fresh, and something that you can only have when you hold court with the Queen. So, in st- so instead of fighting, how about we get into predictions first for NXT TakeOver War Game? War. War. Or are we not allowed to do that anymore? Sorry. I, sure, sure we can. I, I, <laughs> I have one prediction for NXT War Games. It'll be fucking amazing. Yeah, and those were my exact words too. It's Get gonna hit. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna. Or hit. wait, 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 no, wait. I, I have it. Hold on. I gotta get. I gotta summon my inner, um, friend. It's gonna be dope, gang, gang. Oh my god! <laughs> Why you quoting me? Yeah. First of all, it's gonna be fucking dope. Gang, 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 gang. Shout out, Chris. No, you listen, Chris buddy. is going to be on the show sometime in the next week or two. Yeah, when I don't we, think he knows that. Yet. Finally, when we finally start talking about New Japan again, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably going to have to just lay out on that show. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just going to lay out and let y'all just do it. Stop! You're going to participate. God damn it. I don't know a damn thing that's going on in the New Japan scene, so... Don't worry. You don't I'll, need to... We'll catch you up. You'll be just I'll, fine. I'll make it up. All right. What are, what do we have for matches on the Let's Be Serious? We, we currently have four matches for War Games. That's all we need. Two of them are War Games. One is a singles match, and the other is a triple threat. We'll start with the singles match, Matt Riddle versus Finn Balor. Yes, please. Give me it twice on Sunday, too. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me get some paper so I can write these predictions. I'm having some fun here. Pops is feeling himself. You get to see Prince I was feeling Abbott myself perform in NXT. Piano. Stop it. You're interrupting me talking about Prince Devitt returning to NXT because he can't return to New Japan at this juncture, so I'm just going to pretend that he was in NXT's <laughs> Prince Devitt, too. Right. 
Well, he's that, not. That, that, it's that, gonna be great. But that promo he got a few weeks ago was definitely fucking Prince, Prince Devitt. It was so well, good. He I said can't the wait. Is back. He did say it. The yep. Prince is back, baby, and the Queen couldn't be happier. Thank you, Amen. So who's gonna win that match? Finn Balor. I don't want to go against. Our, our, our boy Finn, but I, I, I've got a feeling Riddle's gonna win. Just just a feeling I've got. I don't think so. I will have I, I will have happily be wrong. Okay. Well, you're gonna be wrong, so yeah. I'm gonna go with Balor. <laughs> you know, I I really wish that Matt would just put on some damn shoes. Like, <laughs> I, I hate feet. <laughs> I just hate feet. I, I hate feet. Yeah, <laughs> I would rather he just not wear those short shorts, <laughs> and but, he needs a haircut. I can't. Why doesn't Why doesn't somebody just stomp on his feet? I mean, like that's what so I would do because you'd break his toes. But it's so simple psychology. I know. Anyway, what's next? The, the, then we've got a triple threat to de- determine the num- number one contender, the number one contender for the NXT Championship on Survivor Series. P- Pete Dunn, Kelly and Dane, and Damian Priest. Uh, I'm going Pete Dunn all the way. I'm also going Pete Dunn. The other one that I can see winning, but I'm obviously not going to choose him, is Damian Priest. Because from what I've seen of him so far, I, I, I like where they're going with him. But he's just, too, unfortunately, too too new, so I can't pick him. That's surprising, because that's why I'm picking him. Because <laughs> hmm. it's NXT. Right. And they're, they, they, like to, they like to, like, whoa, you know, give us those whoa moments. moments and uh, it'll be nice to see... Damien's a former Monster Factory student, yes, correct? Correct. Yeah, it'd be really, it'd be nice to see that right. happen. So, all right, all right. Then the first War Games match, you've got Undisputed Era: Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, and Roderick Strong versus Tomasa Champa, Keith Lee, D- Dominic Dijak, and a fourth person to be named at the show, I believe. Because so, a- Dream, right? I would think mm-hmm. so. I mean, who else could it be? It's unless, possible. Unless they're going to give it Kevin Owens. It's possible, but I just I just read something that Dream's expected to be out till 2020. Oh, wow. That could be a that could be a swerve. I, my thought is actually Kevin Owens. I, yeah, I think it's either one of those two. If, if the Dream injury is not as serious as they want us to believe, then it'll be him. If not, it's going to be Kevin Owens returns to NXT and the. Sh- building's roof is going to fly away. Mm-hmm. I actually kind of hope it is Kevin Owens and not Dream. Right. I, and I, no kinda, offense to Dream. I kind of hope it's Kevin Owens because that'll sow some doubt for Sunday. Yep, and we need some doubt. I agree. <sighs> this one's tough because, you know, the Undisputed Era is such a, well, obviously, <laughs> there's only two NXT War Games so far. Um and now these next two, so there will only be four War Games matches in NXT history, but they've been in all of them. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of hard to go against that, plus the fact that they're such a unified team. They have all the gold. It's, you know, they're hitting on all cylinders right now. And you look at Team Ciampa, it's like, is that even like a real team? It's like, it's, it seems just like a mismatch of people. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a ragtag team led by Ciampa. It is a ragtag team. Right, because, of course, John is hurt. Dream is hurt. What are you going to do? Right. Mm-hmm. So I understand why it is what it is. It just kind of seems like, well, let's uh, call in the cavalry, I guess. Uh, what we got? Mm-hmm. It just seems like that to me. Um, it's, hard, it's hard for me to pick a winner without knowing the fourth person. I feel like if it is Kevin Owens, I would have a hard time believing they'd send him down there to lose. Uh, down to War Games, I mean, not down mm-hmm. to NXT. But I'm going to stick with Undisputed Era. I'm also going to go on Undisputed Era as well because they run that shit down there. Gold, baby. Okay, so I, I'm going with them too, but you brought up something with KO. Wouldn't it be cool if, if KO came down and uh, they lost, but it set up something with Chopper right away? That'd, That'd be dope. Cool. I, think that w- I think that would be a dope lineup. Oh, I just said dope. Oh, my God. Ah. <sighs> I'm stealing Queen's mm-hmm. words. <laughs> you do you, boo-boo. Oh my god! I can't. <laughs> All right, and, I cannot. And the last match is the w- women's war games match: Rhea Ripley, Candice LeRae, Tegan Knox, and Mia Yim versus Sh- Shayna Baszler, I- Io Shirai, Bianca Belair, and Kaylee Ray. That team. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. 
Every time I fucking pick, pick against Shayna Baszler, she fucking wins. So why do I bother? <laughs> I just... Ay, ay, ay. Man. This is dope. This match is going to be Sarah, I'll use it the right way. It was dope. I can't wait. Fucking Rhea Ripley. Ooh, girl. Mm, can't. Love her. But uh, can I go for all the heels <laughs> for Pete Dunne? <laughs> Fuck me. I don't know what to do here. Yeah, all right. Team Baszler it is. I fucking, I fucking never pick her, but I'm doing it. <laughs> now we're going to fucking lose. God damn it. God damn it, Queenie. I know. I'm also going Team Baszler. I'm doing it. Well, I never pick against Baszler, and she always wins, so I'm going with Baszler. <laughs> fucking Io Shirai. I, I mean, right? what else do you want in your life? Her, Kaylee Ray, Bianca Belair, whatever, and uh, Shayna Baszler. So, <laughs> isn't Leo Rush defending his championship? On the is there a pre-show for NXT? Uh, it's, it, it, it's not listed, but I think so. It's just not, mm. not not currently on the on the list that I've got. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't like that little bitch, but if they put him on the pre-show of Survivor Series, I'll watch it. He'll win, too. Just in yeah. case, for the record, if they're doing this match, he'll win. <laughs> I am like. Probably I, I can't I don't I don't like Leo Rush. I don't either. All right, that's the end of War Games predictions. Now we're on to the eight match card of Survivor Series. You know, surprisingly, that's not a bad card. No. For a WWE pay per view, it's eight matches. I mean, they still have a day or two to add more, but they could, they could add three more and fuck us. <sighs> they add SmackDown, so <laughs> right. Look so, out, people. So right now, I'm just gonna be happy with the eight match card. I think it's. I think that's a perfect amount um, for a Survivor Series slash Night of Champions slash Clash of Champions. The first match that's li- that I've got listed, that, can we, we never know what order these are going to be in, and I don't have anything marked as a pre- pre-show match, so I won't label as, as a pre-show match because I don't see any. We've got Adam Cole versus the winner of the War Games Triple Threat for the NXT Championship. Mm-hmm. So if Pete wins, uh, he'll be fighting Adam Cole. Yep. Which is great. But he'll lose. <laughs> but he'll lose to Adam Cole. Yep. So, and anybody else who would win that match would lose to Adam Cole. So, Adam Cole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just to get people on, on, on Survivor Series and give them a paycheck. But yeah, Adam Cole wins. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what made like that's what makes the triple threat threat so hard. Like, who are they going to feed the call? Because you can't give Adam Cole the last two weeks and then have him lose on the pay per view. That mm. way, he would look horrible. Yeah, terrible. So, yeah. I mean, I was going to pick Cole anyway, <laughs> but he's going to defeat Damian at the, the pay per view. Then we've got a- AJ Styles, the current United States Champion, versus Shinsuke Nakamura, the current the current. And our Catnall Champion versus Roderick Strong, the current North American Championship, for a brand supremacy match. Inject it into my veins. Right? I'm so excited for this. Um, there's going to be OC fuckery with Shinsuke. I, oh. And oh, Undisputed fuckery. Feels, and Undisputed fuckery. All the feels. I can't. Sammy fuckery. Yeah, well, I hope he's just quiet. I hope someone duct tapes his mouth shut and puts him in the corner. <laughs> but just think about it. Adam Cole coming out to, like, help Roddy, right? There's Shinsuke, and there's AJ Styles, and there's the OC all together. Oh, it's just so nice. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. This is tough, but I, I'll go with AJ, I think, is my ultimate decision. I'll go with Roddy. I know that I'm not going to go with Shinsuke. Is... <laughs> Good call. It's hard, isn't it? It's tough. I almost went for Roddy too, but the thing the thing is, is this is stupid. You give your three mid card champions on your show, and two of them are going to end up looking like well, shit. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna, I'm going to go. Oh shit! The, the one thing tough. I the one thing I am going to say definitely. I is cannot pick against AJ Styles. Nakamura takes the pin. Look, this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to go with AJ because I can't pick against someone here, but I can see they're not being a winner at all. I can see the no I can see the I can see the match getting thrown out because of all the fuckery that's going to happen. Could be or that we think is going to happen. So um, that to me would be the best case scenario. But hmm. you know, I was reading a thing that, uh, earlier today about them making a case for a full NXT sweep. 
mm-hmm. of Survivor Series. I'd be good with that. Now that mm-hmm. is a dope theory. Yeah. I just can't see it happening. Over a few yeah. things, I just can't see it. But a lot of it, I wouldn't hate. Yeah, I you thought know, that I... was, it was an interesting theory. I thought it was cool. I was like, oh, oh, I like that. I like that. But but here's the here's the question. <clears throat> If that happens, Vince needs to ch- to treat it then like it is a main legit product. brand, right? Which what? is what Triple H wants. So I can definitely see that. Oh shit! I almost, almost want to change. I, I, I just, it, like I almost want to change my pick right now just to do that, just so I can almost be right. And if it does, yeah, we'll be wrong. But <laughs> this is a weekend where you can definitely see. Vince and H going at it all weekend long, it, and Triple H dying on some fucking hill. I think it would be really cool for them if they did sweep this, though. Right. Because it would cement them as the third brand mm-hmm. of WWE, not going down to NXT. They're already starting it, right? They're already starting it with, you know, Finn, Finn. and people showing up for this invasion angle and the pop that they're getting. Because that revival match, by the way. I heard it was fire off the against road. undisputed. Yeah, holy fuck! But anywho, that's a different show. But anywho, this uh, this whole idea, right? That that they're trying to to put it on the map as not just NXT, but as NXT the on third USA brand. Yep. as a third like a viable third brand. option for people. They should clean sweep Survivor Series. I mean, what a fucking statement that would be. People right. would be tuning. If they're fucking smart for their business, and if I wanted to put some more nails in the coffin of AEW, that's what I would do. I would make them run ramp ramp it through Survivor Series so that they come back again on NXT and just beat everybody down. Like Raw and SmackDown superstars come down and just, you embarrassed us, da da da. Oh, yeah. It'd be dope, but it won't happen. But it'd be cool. Just saying, if it does happen, you're welcome. <laughs> Hey, that's if it my doesn't, line. I never. We stole mine, so. Okay, I won't steal yours if you don't steal that. All right, have it back. Uh, all right, then, then we've got the Viking Raiders, the current Raw Tag Team Champions, versus the New Day, the current Raw, uh, SmackDown Tag Team Champions, versus the Undisputed Era, Bob, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly, the current NXT Tag Team Champions, for again more brand supremacy and a triple threat. I don't yep. really want the New Day in this match, but uh. <laughs> Probably gonna win, so <laughs> SmackDown needs a win, and this seems like appropriate spot to give it to him. So, as much as I don't want to, yeah, probably New Day. Well, what should happen is Undisputed Era. What won't happen is Undisputed Era. <laughs> 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 so New Day, I guess. Uh, no, I'm, I'm gonna go with, with, with a two thirds win for. NXT and go go with Undisputed Era here. I am too. Good for you. They're gonna put some work in this weekend. Mm-hmm. I hope they do. And then I hope they do win. I hope I'm wrong. And then the third match for brand supremacy is Becky Lynch, the current Raw Women's Champion, versus Bailey, the the current SmackDown Women's Champion, versus Shayna Baszler, the current NXT Women's Champion, for the third and final brand supremacy match. Um, I'd like to see Baszler and Lynch on Raw. On Monday, <laughs> mm-hmm. I want to fucking see this match for like the um, first hour. For like the first hour, just the Iron Woman match to yep. start raw. I, that's great. I'll get popcorn. Right. Fucking white, claw. white claws. Let's go. <laughs> like I'm ready. Um, this is tough. What are they gonna do here? Because they book Baszler like a badass. She hasn't lost. Becky's lost. Mm-hmm. But Becky's their their lady. And why is Bailey in this match? Because um, she just happens to have a title. She just happens to have a title right now. I, I really want Shayna to win. But I feel like they're going to give it to Becky. And if we're going to see a Ronda return, it might be now. I also want Shayna to win, but I've got a feeling Becky and Shayna are going to lo- lose control of the match and Bailey's going to steal it here. I thought about that, too. Fucking Karen. <laughs> In this match, ba- Bailey is Karen, yes. So is that your pick? Yes. Is that your final answer? Yes. Are you sure you want to be that wrong? Yep. Again, I, I thought I was going to go two, for, the, for the two-third sweep. I can't go for the, the sweep after saying I'm going for the two-third sweep. It's a lot of sweeping. 
Kenny? Sorry. But on, on this one, I will be perfectly okay with the both of you being wrong, and I am going Baszler. I can't pick against her. I never have. I never will. She's my... She is my NXT Darby Allen. I will... I, even if she loses, she had the best shot on the card. <laughs> do you really think that Vince is going to let H beat Becky? That's that's the only thing that's st- stopping me. Mm-hmm. Listen, this is what I think. Triple H knows how to... <laughs> if Triple H can get me to run through a wall for him, he's going to get the... He's going to have to get into Vince's head that Baszler is the money going forward and that she has to beat Becky because of the rematch will draw so much money and ratings that it has to happen because if Becky beats Baszler the rematch doesn't matter I don't think she will beat Baszler I think she'll beat Bailey well that's a point too and then Baszler's gonna say you didn't fucking pin me bitch and I can let see me that come happen. get your arm. I told you I was coming for your arm, but some other shenanigans went down, and I wasn't able to be there. So now I'm here on Raw, and it's over. And then Shayna right. should lay her out. But I can see that happening <laughs> with Shayna beating Bailey and Becky saying, "Well, you didn't beat me." Sure, it could go either way. You know, and I think if Shayna is chasing Becky, it'll mean less than if Becky is trying to chase Baszler because then if if the Raw Women's Champion is chasing after the NXT Women's Champion, that's going to help elevate NXT all that much more. It's, you know, that that's... They have to play it smart either way, I think. Right. Mm-hmm. It has to be very carefully done in order for them both to look the way they need to look. And I will say this, I have not been happy with um, the way Sasha's been... Um, booked, and I wasn't happy that um, Bailey ended up with a title, but I am happy that Sasha Banks isn't in the position that Bailey is in on Sunday. I mm-hmm. totally agree. <laughs> you know, Bailey has pretty much proved that nothing works. Smiley happy doesn't work. Wiener heel? I, I don't understand this character. Is she heel or isn't she? She don't know, because she doesn't believe it. So it's it's just bad. Anyway, so it's, that's that's the one match that I'm tuning in for, really. <laughs> um, that that to me is making this whole show must see, because of their promo that we mm-hmm. broke down in great detail on convos and DIWTSP. We're gonna talk about that promo again. Anybody? No, no, we have too many more matches to talk about. Fine. <laughs> And I'm not I'm not gonna let you fucking de- derail. We got too many too, too much recording to do. Then we've got Brock Lesnar versus Rey Mysterio in a no holds bars match for the WWE Championship match. I don't care. Yeah, I'm gonna take a leak during this match because that's right. that's about how long it'll last. Yeah, Lesnar. Yeah. So. Blah. I mean, they're friends, so Brock might give him five minutes. So maybe I'll. Save up a good dump for that match. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> look, are they gonna take the title off of Kofi and give it to fucking Ray? No, like that. Like, come on, like seriously. Yeah, uh, absolutely not. I'm sure Kane Velasquez will come out or Dominic or whatever the fuck because it's no hold bars, but it doesn't make a difference. We're all in agreement on that. Yep. Yeah, I think Kane will just fall into another Kamara. Then we've got the Fiend Bray Wyatt versus Daniel Bryan for the. WWE Universal Championship. Fiend retains. Fun. <laughs> Fiend all the way. Next. It'll be a good match, but... It'll be good, but... We'll have to deal with shitty shitty red lighting still. Or maybe it'll be blue because it's SmackDown now. No, listen. This blue belt, how disappointing. I, fucking I wanted it. it to, like, be bleeding. And, like, have teeth. Uh-huh. Or be different on the other side. Like, he is different on the other side. I, I, that I, would make sense. I wanted the orange belt that we've seen on Twitter. I would take anything other than that blue thing. The fuck? The one that Jay-Z posted? Together. Yes. That one. From Top Rope? Yes. That uh, that's that's a pretty sick belt. I think Brave even posted a picture of he, it. He did. Then we've got the... Oh, wait. I'm going to pick. Sorry. You didn't let me pick. Pick, damn it. I thought you just picked Bray. I was just talking about his belt. Uh, I'm going to pick 
the fiend. <laughs> okay, now we can move on. All right. Now we're going to go with the, fi- with the five on five men Survivor Series triple threat elimination match. We- we've got Team Raw, Seth, Drew, KO, Randy Orton, and Ricochet versus Team SmackDown, Roman Reigns, Mustafa Ali, Braun Strowman, King Corbin, and, and Chad Gable. I refuse to use that other name. He's getting paid a lot of money for that name. Let's use it. No, fuck that. A lot of money. His the merchandising promo? check this quarter is going to be great. The promo picture that they have for this match, his head looks like it's photoshopped onto a body. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then <laughs> Team NXT, I don't have the list of members for whatever reason. They're to be announced because they have to figure out after War Games that's what, that's what I who's thought. left alive. Yep. <laughs> Um, I don't fucking care. Probably Roman Reigns, because does he ever lose on a pay-per-view? Not really. So whatever team Roman is on is probably the one that's going to win. The, 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 I'm going to say last two that we see is Randy Orton and Roman, and then Roman is sole, sole survivor, because LOL, Roman wins. Dude, Corbin just beat him on national television clean. So one loss. To it's Corbin. It's not a pay-per-view. It's not a pay-per-view. On national television. One loss. It's not a pay-per-view. <laughs> lose on pay-per-views like fucking ever except for every now and then they throw us one we're like oh look he lost wow so you're going more you're going team smackdown yep queen yeah also team smackdown really? yep dude i i don't care <laughs> i'm going with team nxt good for you then, then we've got the other five on five on five women's survivor series triple threat elimination match Team Raw is Charlotte Flair, Natty, Asuka, Kairi Sane, and Sarah Logan. Team SmackDown is Sasha Banks, Carmella, Dana Brooke, Lacey Evans, and Nikki Cross. And then NXT is once again TBD. I just want to see EO and Kairi have a stare down again because that was fucking dope right. on Wednesday. Yes. Um, so that'll probably happen. So I assume EO is going to be on Team NXT. Mm-hmm. Probably like Dakota Kai and like, you know, fucking like Ray or whatever. Um, and they're going to be a formidable team. I think that'd be awesome. Uh, Do we see Shayna working three times this weekend and coming up and leading that team? No. No. She has to. This will probably be on the pre show, if I had to guess, or yeah. early in the show, get it over with. Because <laughs> I fucking don't want to watch this either. Um. <laughs> I don't know. More who are you picking? I'm I'm actually gonna go with Team NXT here. Yeah, fuck it, why not? Yeah, oh sure I. Why not? She's not even booked in this match. I'm booking her in it, so <laughs> why not? Yeah, I picked NXT. <laughs> Alright, fuck it. Clean sweep. Great. Alright, that that puts an end to the eight match card for Survivor series. Do you guys have any closing thoughts? Yeah, I do. <laughs> why is this clash of champions? <laughs> because it's br- br- brand, brand versus brand versus brand so they had to do it this oh, way I guess I know I mean I'm so I'm so glad NXT is involved don't get me wrong it's just really funny mm-hmm. let's get all the champions in next okay, I think I drink too many white claws <laughs> yeah I mean hey listen pay them fuck it that's great right um yeah, like, I'm excited for War Games, and I'm excited for a few matches on Survivor Series. Normally, I'm more excited about Survivor Series. I just want to see... And, dude, I really want the prophecy that NXT is going to sweep this thing. I will lose my mind. We will. I think we'll, we will collectively lose our shits if, if that happens. Yeah. Also, I just want to see Adam Cole versus Pete Dunne, because fucking that's great. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's what I got, guys. That That's it. How about you, Pops? Well, you know me. I always have something to say. So, I'm going to say thank you to the Midwest Sports Network for keeping us on. I want to say thank you to PowerSlam.tv for giving us the promo code DYWTSB to give all of our listeners a free month when they sign up for their service on their PC. I want to say thanks to Mort for producing and Queen for being here and y'all for listening and stay tuned next week for a very special Thanksgiving episode. That's right. Next Thursday is Thanksgiving here in the States, so we will not have a normal DYWTSB episode. So we will see you all in two weeks. And 
for those in the States, enjoy your holiday. For everybody else, enjoy your Thursday. And again, see you all in two weeks.